Hello, everybody. In this video lecture, we will cover dihybrid cross. So this is the PowerPoint that I will use. Let's go ahead and begin. So we continue talking about Mendel experiment. In the previous video, we cover monohybrid cross. So if you didn't see that video yet, go ahead and do it. And in this lecture, we will cover dihybrid. So dihybrid cross is a mating of parental varieties differing in two characters. So monohybrid cross um, is a cross between parents that only differ in one character. When they differ in two characters, then it's dihybrid cross. So look over here. Here we have parents, one parent and another parent. They're purebred generation, but this one, um, this plant, pea plant, has seeds that are yellow and round. You see how we have here two different characters, yellow and round, and this one is green and wrinkled, right? So, um, and uh, similar to monohybrid cross, we use letters to abbreviate alleles, and we use capital letters for dominant alleles and lowercase letters for recessive alleles. And because parents are purebred, they are homozygous. This one homozygous dominant for both genes, and this one is homozygous recessive for both genes. So big R, big R, big Y, big Y, little R, little R, little Y, little Y, right? Okay, so, so the Mendel kind of had this question, what would be result from dihybrid cross? And two hypotheses are possible, dependent assortment and independent assortment. Dependent kind of tells you that dominant always goes with dominant and recessive with the recessive. So um, if you're looking at, um, at this example, obviously, look, you need to separate R's and Y's, right? So gametes always will care only one allele. So one allele for color and one allele for shape. So this carries allele for round and allele for yellow. Only one allele for uh, um, this trait, right? One allele for color and one allele for shape. The same over here. Organisms like you and me and plants and animals, they have two alleles for each gene. Gametes, eggs and sperm, carry only one allele for a gene. So what is our genes over here? One gene is gene for color, and another gene is gene for a shape of a seed. Gene for color is yellow here. Gene for color is uh, green, right? So alleles, alleles are yellow, alleles are green. And uh, another gene is shape of, of a seed. And this gene is round, uh, well, this allele is round, and this allele is uh, wrinkled. So in F1 generation, we will have hybrids. So these hybrids always will carry characteristic only one parent. Only dominant characteristics will be expressed. So round and yellow, round and yellow, but they do carry alleles for green and for wrinkled. Now, if we assume that during sperm and egg formation, recessive always go with recessive and dominant always goes with dominant, this is a possible outcome. So we can have a ratio three to one, yellow round three and uh, wrinkled green one, right? If this is, this is dependent assortment. Independent assortment tells you there is all possible combination. Dominant allele can go with dominant, but dominant can go with recessive as well. And recessive can go with the recessive. So we have four possible eggs and four possible sperm. And look, what is interesting here, in offspring, you can get phenotype that neither one of parent did. Like look, parent is round and yellow, and another parent is green and wrinkled, but look at offspring, round and green. No parent has it. Or wrinkled and yellow, no parent has it. Right, so which one is correct one? Well, this needs to be decided through experimentation. And this is what um, 
Mendel did. So he crosses it and see, he sees this result. So that supported independent assortment. So Mendel's dihybrid cross supported the hypothesis that each pair of alleles segregates independently of the other pair during gamete formation. Thus, the inheritance of one character has no effect on the inheritance of another, and this is called Mendel's law of independent assortment. So this one is correct, right? So this is independent assortment. Like, um, here I'm gonna give you a very simple example, kind of to uh, make sense of it. Now, if my father has black hair and brown eyes, and my mom has blonde hair and blue eyes, independent assortment tells you that I can inherit black hair from dad and blue eyes from mom. I don't need to inherit black hair and brown eyes from my dad. I can inherit some characteristic from my dad, black hair, and some from my mom, blue eyes, right? Or I can inherit one from mom, blonde hair and brown eyes from my dad. That's what independent assortment means. It means that inheritance of one character has no effect on the inheritance of another. And again, we're talking about Mendelian genetics, right? We will have several lectures that tell us that, well, sometimes it does have effect, but then it, it will be some extension of Mendelian genetics. Right, but that's our dihybrid cross. Uh, phenotypic ratio predicted for dihybrid cross is nine to three to three to one. So that's a phenotypic ratio. So here's our problem. In panthers, black fur is dominant to yellow fur. A recessive gene results in the absence of claws. Predict the offspring of a cross between heterozygous black panther with no claws and yellow panther that is heterozygous for claws. So you see, this is the hybrid cross because we're looking at two characteristics. Color of the fur, this is one gene. Fur color, one gene, two alleles, black and yellow. Another gene is claws and two alleles, claws are present or claws are absent, right? So please pause the video and try to solve this problem. So I hope you came up with uh, this um, genotype and penis squares that look like that. So black fur is dominant, yellow fur is recessive, claws dominant, no claws is recessive. And then we have parent over here, so this one, yellow with claws, heterozygous. And this one is black without claws. So when you uh, fill in Panet square, your genotypic ratio should be one to one to one to one, and the same your phenotypic ratio, right? So this one would be black with claws. This will be black without claws. This will be uh, a yellow, with claws, and this is yellow without claws. Um, rule of multiplication states that the probability of a compound event is the product of the separate probabilities of the independent events. So what does it mean? It means that, well, look over here. Sometimes you don't wanna build Pennant Square big like this, but this is for dihybrid cross. Imagine how big this is gonna be for tri or quadra, right? The more characteristic you're looking at, this Pennant square is getting really, really huge and it's very hard to make sense of it. So instead of building Pennant square like this, uh, we can use rule of multiplication. So here's our two parents, big A, little a, big B, little b, right? So it's a heterozygous, and it's dihybrid cross, and this is homozygous dominant for one gene and heterozygous for another. And uh, can they produce, and what is the probability for these two parents to have offspring like this, heterozygous for both traits? 
So instead of just making big Pennett square, you're just looking separately at uh, A's and B. So you just kind of cross big A, little A with big B, big A, a big A, right? So over here, and you do B's separately. And then you see what's your probability of heterozygous, big and little, right? Over here, it's probability one half, right? One over two. And probability of big B, little B is also one over two. And so you multiply them and you get uh, one over four, right? So 25% probability that offspring gonna be um, heterozygous for both genes, right? So that, th this is just the easier way to find a probability of event. So Mendel's principle applied to the inheritance of many human traits. Uh, so here's dominant traits, here's recessive, like freckles, no freckles, that's as recessive. Widow's peak, so this hairline like this is dominant and straight hairline is recessive. Ear lobes, free ear lobes are dominant and attached are recessive. So we can look at different traits and we can use um, Mendel's genetics to predict the outcome of this inheritance. So dominant traits are not necessarily normal or more common. Uh, well, if more common or normal are not dominant, then how do we call these more common traits? More common traits that most often seen in nature are called wild type traits. Those seen more often in nature and not necessarily specified by dominant alleles. So let's go back over here. Like freckles is dominant trait, but if you think about uh, people that you know, many of them don't have freckles, right? So dominant doesn't necessarily need, it's more common. Uh, family pedigree is a diagram that uh, uh, shows the history of a trait in a family and allow geneticists to analyze human traits. Um, pedigree used to, again, predict uh, what kind of traits um, the kids will inherit from their parents. For pedigree, um, we use uh, circles and squares, squares for male, circles for female. And then um, if you have like color inside this circle or square, that means this person has these traits of your interest. So this example, uh, our interest is attached ear lobes, right? So the ones that we shade inside uh, will be attached. And because attached are recessive, right? We know exactly the genotype of this. All persons that has this uh, purple color inside their sh shapes, we know they are homozygous recessive, right? So here, Aaron, Mary, Betty, and they have four kids, right? One girl, three boys, and here's another family, Cletus and Deborah. They have two kids, um, Ina and Jill, and then Ina and Hall get married, right? Neither one of them has a touch real lobes, but uh, their first kid has it, right? So that's a family pedigree. Nobody, of course, geneticists will not make a pedigree to look at your earlobes, but it can be very useful for some genetic conditions, especially the ones that can affect uh, kids' health, right? So if your parents are carrier for some genetic disorders, it's good to ask geneticists to build this pedigree and give them prediction of, um, what is the chance of their kids to carry uh, on the same genetic condition? Okay, so this was uh, the last slide. <clears throat> Thank you for watching. We cover dihybrid cross, and I hope it was helpful.